Today we're talking about Picardy Thirds, often confused with Captain Picard's Third, which according to official Starfleet chain of command would be Lieutenant Worf. But a Picardy Third is generally a classical music term that is pretty interesting, okay? So the definition of it is when you have something in a minor key, a whole piece is in a minor key, and then it ends and resolves in a major key. So for example, if it's something in the key of E minor, all right? Like, let's just do a, a typical E minor progression with a lot of minor chords to kind of give it a minor sound. So E minor, to G major, to B minor, to A minor, and then resolve on E minor. Okay, so that's just a traditional kind of like E minor piece. If we were to end that with the Picardi third to include that, we would take that E minor and make it E major, okay? So the difference that would have is if we have E minor, minor, A minor, okay? So it has a different type of re resolution that is maybe a little bit uh, unexpected, a little bit happier, fitting. Really how you interpret that is up to you, but this is something that was employed by Baroque Renaissance composers. Uh, Johann Sebastian Bach was somebody that really used the relationship and uh, kind of the ambiguity of major and minor together to elicit a certain response. But I think it's actually worth talking about because we can incorporate that into maybe a more modern compositional singer-songwriter approach, okay? So when I think of what, what I think of uh, as a Picardi third in practice, because again, it's supposed to be the end of an actual piece, but you can kind of use them in chord progressions in like a smaller dose. Uh, I think of the song uh, Exit Music for a Film by Radiohead, okay? So it sounds like this. Very firmly in A minor, with the A minor suspend or A suspended to, to A sus4, eventually going to E, back to the sus4, and then eventually it ends up on that A major. So I think that's really kind of like a brilliant way to include what, you know, I, I kind of think of that as the spirit of what a Picardi third is. Just kind of like having a piece move from minor to major, okay? Because no one key will have the same tonic, the same root note A as major or minor. So it's just kind of like you are uh, worth talking about how you can do this. So. Again, like maybe uh, we can even do something a little bit different. Let's do something in the key of D or specifically the key of B minor. This really works uh, well with a relative minor of a key, which happens on the sixth note of any scale. So again, in the key of D, we've got D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. Okay, so if we have those chords, any one of those chords in the key of D or the key of B minor, and really hammer home on that B minor, kind of make that a tonal center. Even if you just use those two chords, like B minor to D. And then maybe we could also incorporate like another minor chord, like an E minor, to kind of give more of like a somber tone to that. Okay, right there, that will be taking that minor chord and then just at the end of the progression, at the end of the piece or whatever, using it as a major chord, okay? This is something uh, the Beatles would do a lot in their music. Uh, they kind of used, something they like to do is use what's called a minor four chord. Uh, so again, an example of uh, that, which maybe like, I think we'd be remiss to not talk about the opposite of a Picardi third. So again, like, you know, if you go back to Captain Picard, his kind of like, calm stoicism and intelligence, the foil for that would be just kind of like a brash courageousness, which would be ca uh, Captain Kirk. So this would be like a Kirky third. And I guess uh, the example of that, going from the opposite of like we said, doing something major and ending in minor would be uh, maybe like the Elliott Smith song between the bars, uh, the, the chorus of that, where it's like an F to a G to an A minor. F major G, F, G, A minor run, F major, and then going from that to F minor, okay? So, that would
would be a, a parallel minor type deal where you just have like a major chord and then you switch it to minor. Again, this one specifically, the minor four chord. That's just something that the Beatles picked up, you know? And I think just kind of playing around with the idea of major and minor is something that has like a really kind of dramatic impact in songwriting. Because once you stay in a key, like a diatonic key or something like that, uh, you almost kind of know what to expect and your ears are, even if it's kind of a busier chord progression and it's not just more than just a few chords, if it's all staying in the same key, your ear is just so used to what's coming that when you do maybe hit like a minor four chord or you take that relative minor and all of a sudden make it major, that really is kind of an impactful moment that stands out. So again, that's something that composers have been doing you know, since like the dawn of music. Again, Bach, a great example of kind of using this Picardi third. Uh, the Beatles doing a great job of using like a minor four chord. Elliot Smith taking stuff from the Beatles. Again, everybody kind of just, you know, steals certain tips or tricks in their songwriting from people that came before them. And I think the Picardi third are just generally thinking about uh, blurring the line between what's major and minor is something that you should really just kind of experiment and try playing around with because, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Again, all these music theory rules are made to be broken. That's why it's not like, it's not music law. So definitely uh, just kind of experiment with maybe where there is a minor chord, try forcing a major chord in there. And if it sounds too jarring, there are subtle ways that you can kind of like make it less jarring. Again, back to that Radiohead song. We've got really just two chords. It's A minor to E major and we end up on A major, okay? So if it was just A minor, E major, then that's, you know, to me, that's not a very creative way to do it. We wanna kind of work our way to that A major. So again, I, I think, you know, Johnny Greenwood, I think all those guys are brilliant writers. So one way that you can maybe do that is take this A minor chord and use a lot of suspensions because a suspended chord is neither major nor minor. That third that we've been talking about the whole time is really, really important. So when we have an A minor to an A minor, I keep saying A minor suspended, that's not a thing. A sus two, A minor to A sus two, A suspended four, right there. We're kind of dancing around the A minor. And then we go to E. And then when we come back, we're on A suspended four. that's a little bit of an easier transition to get to that A major by kind of having that suspended chord in there first. Because even though our ears are used to A minor, by having those suspensions in there, it's not as jarring as going from A minor to A major. Since you can also suspend a major chord, a suspension is a good way to kind of maybe bridge that gap between major and minor and just kind of like, you know, subtly play around with these chords to kind of take it in a certain direction. And I think that's something that really great songwriters tend to do is they kind of use a progression or they use a combination of how a melody interacts with the progression to lead a listener somewhere. So I think the more thoughtful you are about that stuff, I really think the better your own compositions and songwriting is gonna become. So something I just wanted to talk about, I got a few questions on it. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, Leave something in the comments below. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, or the website, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.